Welcome, Spartans, to the latest podcast of all book club. I'm your host today, David, and with me is Aaron. Hi, guys. And Krista Brown. Books. Yay! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> books are great, even though this is kind of not books, but technically a book. What? This book has too many pictures. Yeah, it's a picture book. Today, we are talking about Lone Wolf, which is a standalone four-part comic. Which I'll go into the details now. It's all about the lovely Linda. Before we get too far into the show, though, I would like to take a very quick moment to thank all of our current patrons for your support. Thank you all very much. I won't date this podcast by giving out numbers, but we have ridiculous numbers. So thank you all for your support. It's incredible that we can still do this thingy and that you like it enough to give us give us those monies. So thank you all very much. This book club is Halo Lone Wolf. It is authored by Anne Toole. Kieran McKeown is an artist. That's a very Irish name. And J.L. Straw is also an artist. Like I mentioned, it's a four-part. It is a Dark Horse comic. So it looks at Halo. Halo is, sorry, 3 for 3 are continuing their um, relationship with Dark Horse and pumping out all those comics. This is the, as the time of writing, the most current Halo comic that's been released. Its release schedule is as follows. It had issue one on the you know these american date times are irish they are no these are uh, david these are irish date times i did them proper dates the 2nd of january this of 2019 sorry and um, the 6th of february the 6th of march and the 3rd of april so they were actually pretty consistent when, uh, coming out i thought there was a bigger gap between them am i wrong maybe i was thinking of no that was collateral damage had crazy release dates uh, ignore my my randings there's a hardcover that also came out on the 25th of june 2019 its formats were all the kinds that you would expect. The digital single issues, the hardcover collection, as well as I think, did it have, um, probably did have soft copies of the original single issues, did it? I think so, but I think you kind of have to go to a comic store to get them. If you're one of those real comic book nerds that go to real stores, you could have gotten it that way. Um, each issue is roughly about 80 pages, and it's a nice little story, uh, self-contained, as I said, and all about Linda058. So the brief synopsis is that Linda is given a lone solo mission, is a covert mission essentially to assassinate a particular fellow named Dr. Chen. He is a kind of, they start the story with telling you that he's like a rogue person who like took the ship and disappeared after the events of Reach. And they want you to pretty much go and eliminate him. They found a distress signal from his ship that's been quiet ever since. They pretty much send you to go and make sure that he is dead. And if he's not, you dead him real good because they don't like the, <laughs> he's an only scientist, essentially. And they don't want him out there with uh, the knowledge he has. So she was given an only assigned AI, which is an intriguing. So Linda must fight her way through both the dregs of the Covenant and the hostility of a lost human settlement to stop the rogue scientist in his tracks. So that's kind of where we're set up. You're on a planet called Sephun 3. There are some main characters, but like many of them are throwaway. Um, so the main ones are obviously Linda, Athos, the AI, Dr. Shen, who is the target, as in the first episode anyway, issue, sorry. And you have Hala, which is a human colonist. Um, there's a few other ones. So like the ship is the, oh, something of Dawn as well, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, there is a, the ship is called the Promise of Dawn. It's a frigate. So it this ship uh, crashed on this planet essentially and has some uh, human survivors there trying to survive. They have totally cut off, so they don't have a clue what's going on. So the first issue is Linda pretty much being given her mission. Uh, it starts off kind of cool where um, she's training in the war games in Ivory Tower with Kelly. I love that. That it's kind of a, yeah, it's a cool sequence of them like playing war games and shooting each other in Ivory Tower, which is a map we know from Halo. Which is pretty cool. And it's pretty much just sets up. Yeah, Linda's still a badass with a sniper rifle. In case you didn't know who Linda was. She is the Spartan 2 on blue team. Um, who is pretty much the sniper. And as you can imagine, a comic called Lone Wolf is a solo mission about a sniper going to kill some fool. So it starts off really well. They're setting you up, obviously. Straight away, that you see Linda's face. She takes off her helmet and so does Kelly. I can't remember if her ever being described as being red-haired before. Maybe, I can't remember. I have I a remember. funny notion she does have red hair because yeah. it's always John's ginger and he's not. Yeah, that's true. They they kind of mix those up a little bit. What else is there? Is there any other? I'm trying to think. I, 
there are other characters in this that are kind of touched on. Because of its setting, there are other other characters coming out. I'll kind of just get into it as we kind of go. So there's another character called Luciana. So these are two kind of um, female survivors that are kind of the main ones. And there is a little, like, an introduction to a new Halo character at the end of the actual ser- series. So um, I have to say, my experience with it was pretty positive. The story itself is kind of meh. But uh, I, I appreciate that Linda is getting has her own comic and has a bit more because when it comes to Blue Team, it's always John. So, like, I love our other team is always together. So I like the idea of fleshing each individual out and giving them some stories for themselves because Fred is pretty much the star of the Troy Denning novels. So, like, Last Light and Retribution stuff is all about, like, the Fred-led Blue Team. And he gets a lot of time and is really well fleshed out there. He even gets a little bit of romance, which is cool. But Linda and all those books is always very quiet. This is the nature of her character. So there isn't a whole lot there. So I was initially quite excited with a comic book series that is just her because then she has to be fleshed out. Like she has to talk. Isn't it? Couldn't just be a comic of her saying nothing. Do you know what I mean? So you're going to get, and you do get some of her character in here, which I really appreciate. That's probably the most positive thing I can think of, of this comic. It's just Linda is great in it and everything else is kind of, do you know what I mean? When Linda's in a panel, the panel's great. When Linda's not in a panel, I don't give a shit. <laughs> kind of how I went through this comic. I just didn't care about the people that she was trying to save or the mission very much. I mean, the the twist, when the mission twisted into something different, it was a little interesting because I knew where it was going. That was when I started caring. But like a good portion of this comic, I'm just like, I want to see Linda kill people in weird ways, in cool ways. She kind of does do cool. Does she got some cool kills? Uh, um, I mean, which is, which is pretty interesting. How did you read it, Krista? Because I read it when it came out, one issue at a time, uh, digitally. Uh, so I only kind of fast read it today, kind of getting ready for the podcast. What did you think? Uh, how, how did you consume it? So generally, I like to read the comics like all at once, and I like to read them right before book club. So I read it yesterday. <laughs> it's probably easier to do it that way, uh, I think. But I, uh, I was actually so into it that I, I liked. I wanted to do it one at a time. Aaron, how, what, what did you think of the comic and how did you consume it? I read them all in one go on my iPad. So I just sort of like, same as Christa, the Krista method, I just went through them all before we recorded. Okay. Overall, the comics don't do a big pile for me, but this especially didn't. No. I felt very meh about the whole thing. It feels like it jumps around a little too much, and I think we talked about it before this, we started recording. It feels like the story stutters and buffers sometimes, because I feel like a panel's in one place, and then I go to the next page, and I'm like, there must be something wrong with this digital version I'm reading, because it seems like we've missed something in the story, but it just cuts and chops and moves in weird pacing ways that I'm not a big fan of. It's the It's the weird, like, comic book pacing, though, like... It's hard to, like, jump to the next set. It's it's hard to jump from set to set without it feeling weird. It's a, Yeah, it's a little bit weird. I kind of wish it just stayed with Linda, because like kind of Krista says, I I don't really care for the, the, the other characters in, in this comic. And I, I, I don't know why, really. They're, they're, just, they're not really fleshed out, and the bits that they have, I'm just kind of mad. They seem kind of whiny, and I'm just, like, not... I don't know. I, I never clicked with any with any of them. I mean, Dr. Shen is the kind of main antagonist and like you're not really sure when you first meet him. So like Linda essentially comes down to the planet uh, that they're on. She has like a stealth Corvette. She doesn't get on well with the AI and I get the sense this is probably her first AI that she's ever really kind of been integrated with. And I think it's also the first Spartan this AI has been integrated with her. So like they have a little bit of kind of teething problems and I liked their discussion and their relationships is the most interesting one scene developed because she, okay Linda had to have an AI because she has to talk to somebody so other than her just talking to herself it, I, I like I appreciate that they give her an AI to talk to that's really where you get her character she's very confident and very sure of herself she also doesn't like to explain herself either she doesn't explain herself to the AI she doesn't really care he's constantly like lodging complaints and she doesn't care, which I thought was funny. Like, and she, she know uh, what I appreciate is that he's obviously trying to dictate the combat battle situation of which she's like, you're not in charge here. Like, you, you don't have the experience for this. I do, 
and she's right and she does things a certain way like that I really thought was cool like uh, letting the jackal jump on thought like he, essentially she comes across the uh, the crash site essentially where the distress speaking was set off and it was set off on covenant technology so like this dead human around here so she's like okay this is a recent kill if they're UNSC they're going to come back to claim the body so she hides for like a day beside the body and waits for them to wait for these two humans to come out so these are these two characters we spoke of which is Luciana and Halla so they're the only let's say semi interesting characters in this which I very little care not so. even like I didn't care for them at all essentially so they just grab the body and essentially run back their dialogue is pretty hard to follow um it's, it's kind of met like they're yeah I, I'm not really interested here they're kind of talking about like okay we have to get back here he shouldn't have been out here what the hell's going on he shouldn't have done this who did that uh, Linda is following them and killing some jackals in cool ways. Oh my god, I love the I love the one where she's like in the bushes behind him. It's just her helmet. The panel is excellent. It it is very well done, but it just shows her face creeping out, and then she just kind of slits its throat. Here's maybe it was just the panels. Did Linda shoot a couple of those jackals, and no one seemed to notice? Like how how did they not hear her sniper rifle? Because they never acknowledge it. They only acknowledge the grunts. In the first panels, they don't at all. She, de- uh, there's never been a silencer in, in Halo. They, they do later, like when okay, she follows them back to the camp. See, she lets the jackal kind of attack them to kind of cover her tracks. I don't know how they haven't heard the sniper shots go off, but eventually they get back to their camp, and essentially the Covenant tracks them back there. I like a cool moment where the AI is like, "Oh, the Covenant tracked you," and she's like, "No, not me." So uh, she tracked the people that she was tracking, which are Hella and Luciana. So they bring the dead body essentially. We're introduced to Dr. Shen. He has a nice little speech where he's talking about like this person, Mattel, was for us, was with us, but ultimately failed us because he didn't believe in us. He's pretty much gearing them towards we're the last of humanity because they're very cut off. They they think the Covenant may have wiped out humanity. That's why no one came to rescue them. They're very much... We've kind of seen this in sci-fi before when like a crew of a ship gets stranded on a planet. One person rises and almost like a cult leader kind of has them brainwashed a little bit so you get that impression that some of these survivors are just very much uh, indoctrinated by this person so he's very charismatic he has like them trapped there while he's working on something you get the impression that some people don't believe him that they could escape at any time they could leave but he's keeping them here for some reason so there's a little bit of turmoil within the camp it's not really well explained or really kind of fleshed out in the first kind of episode really weird like it's not even i feel like it's not very fleshed out at all really it's just kind of like it's happen. it just kind of happens and you read the dialogue and then it's like oh, okay i guess that's what's going on yeah i've been trying to figure out did they crash here accidentally or did he deliberately steal the ship and maroon them i don't know i don't think it's ever really cl- clarified i get the feeling he was all for starting his own little human race it definitely he definitely took advantage of the situation anyway Pretty much, Linda kind of like the Covenant attacked the camp. Linda comes into the rescue, which is pretty cool. She pretty much murders a whole bunch of Covenants and Elise. She kind of very brashly introduced herself to um, the human survivors. Dr. Shen is immediately like suspicious and he's just like, take off your helmet straight away. He's like, oh, show me your face, take off your helmet, which is kind of weird. But he says, if you're coming into our camp, you will not do so armed, which of course she ignores and remains armed, but take, does take off her helmet. Uh, which is obviously an important step. Uh, it's at this point where you get the very at odds between her. She Clearly, she's gone off mission when she's discovered that there are survivors here. And the AI, is, Athos, is not happy because he's like, kill him, kill him now, assassinate him. Your mission is to kill him, kill him now. Linda ignores him and pretty much explains to the survivors, oh yeah, I'm here to rescue you. Um, which is an odd and unusual thing because Dr. Shen thinks they didn't send one Spartan to rescue all these people. So he's kind of clued in a little bit. Uh, he's suspicious she linda i liked it I liked it. It, sh- it shows that linda is not just a cold character's killer like when she saw that there were human survivors here she changed the mission herself into rescuing all these people one of the reasons she didn't kill hit chen when she first saw him because she had sights on him was because he was holding a child there's that too as well yeah he was holding a baby that had obviously recently been born on this planet so i like the way that they're all celebrating and happy when she says the war is over um so they're all like yay we won hooray even though they didn't do anything. <laughs> Even though they just kind of stay. Well, they survived, I guess, is, is kind of what's important. So pretty much Linda's like, I couldn't have killed them, killed him then, because then I wouldn't have gained their trust and they wouldn't have listened to me. But you get the sense that this is an only AI, so he doesn't really care. Do you know what I mean? You're, this was your mission. 
So Linda essentially says, uh, or there's other kind of covenant kind of escaping. So she kind of runs after them to kind of keep the camp secret. Because you get the impression that these people have moved camp several times when the covenant find them. So they're like constantly on the run. They're like just hiding from the covenant. Linda, this sequence is pretty cool because she runs after a ghost and pretty much picks up the ghost and crushes a grunt with it as it's kind of like, it's so brutal. Even the AI is like, was that it? Was that necessary? <laughs> Thought that was pretty cool. So um, this grunt gets a message out saying that there's a, there's a demon on this planet. So we get a quick segment of like saying Healy, like off off somewhere else on the planet going, what the hell is the demon doing here? Do you think they know that we're here or what the hell's going on? And he says, well, we did destroy a human encampment recently. Maybe it's something to do with that. Then there's kind of a segment, it's like a reveal, quote unquote, a reveal of like, they should not know that we are here for the Didax hand g- gathering resources. And it's like, dun, dun, dun. that kind of felt fell a bit meh of like that. Do you know what I mean? The Covenant are here, who cares? If they're just here gathering resources. So that didn't, really impact me i don't know what do you guys think the covenant were just there yeah it made no difference one way or the other they just needed something to put the pressure on in the story and it was just like oh the covenant you could have told me they were here for the banished and i'd have been like yeah all right that would have been cooler well the only difference is that the ghost would have had spikes on the front of it and she would have turned the grunt into even more mush <laughs> <laughs> that would have been about the height of it I can't remember what issue we're in now. We're going to blur in the first and second one. The mission kind of changes a little bit when um, Linda comes back to the camp and pretty much says, yeah, we'll go to my ship and get it, essentially, and I can rescue you. You don't need Dr. Shen to rescue you. I can do that. He's saying it's something like the nav unit on their ship is damaged. He's been trying to repair it for the last year or whatever, and that that's, feels kind of false, like you don't even believe him yourself. Um, So he takes Holla and or Luciana, I think, and goes... Uh, Linda does and says oh I'm going going back to get my ship but Luciana there's kind of a weird dialogue here between Linda and Luciana and then Linda kind of cops on that oh you were sent you you snuck away with Mattel the marine who died to give out the comm message because you don't trust Dr. Shen either then Linda kind of quickly deduced like why are you even here with me yeah at first she kind of thinks that she went with Mattel to shoot him in the back of the head because she's like Hmm, Shen sent you with Mattel because Mattel didn't believe in things and you were here to make sure he didn't come back just like you were here to make sure I didn't. And then she's like, no, 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 I actually sent the message. Me and Mattel went together to do it. And he, and then she's like, well, if you're not here to shoot me in the back of the head, then why are you here? And, she, and then it clicks and she's like, you're here to slow me down. And then they like get to the prowler and it's destroyed by a flamethrower. Yes, this is what I thought was weird. So Hala is the crazy indoctrinated woman who's like, we don't need you. Dr. Shen is more important than you. And burns this advanced only stealth ship with a flamethrower, which was cloaked, by the way, which I find very annoying. So she found it cloaked and burned the crap out of it with a flamethrower. Doesn't make any sense. No, because she says, she, we're not leaving with you. What Dr. Shen has discovered is more important. And Linda's like, what do you mean discovered what? Dun, dun, dun this bit of an angst here between the human settlers they go back to the camp essentially and i kind of blur it here but i don't really understand what's going on but linda gives the athos into the computer or something doesn't she and tells him to find out what dr shen is doing yeah she uploads him into the system to see can he fix the nav thing and then he figures out that there was some sort of archival ai on this ship and this is actually the real reason for the mission. He's like, it might be intact. We might be able to get it. The mission priorities changed. And then he explains that this AI, basically, as far as I can tell, this AI is supposed to know everything about humanity, where we've been, what we've done, our planet. Well, and like the Battle of Reach, like the big one is like the entirety of the Battle of Reach or something like that. It's Wikipedia on an AI, as far as I can tell which I don't entirely buy as a MacGuffin that only one AI knows everything. Yeah, it's kind of weird. There had to be, although then again, it goes back to the great flaw of Reach where one transmitter on Reach, I funny they mentioned this at the end, Visegrad Relay Station cut off all of Reach. So I suppose if you believe that, then maybe she does have it, but still, I don't entirely buy that this one AI knows everything, and I don't think at this stage they mention her name either. 
we still don't know who she is. Nope. She's just some random AI. They mention her as some sort of AI, but it reveals later who she is because I don't think there's much else. They're doing this and then looking through the panels, it flicks back to the unnamed elites who send a squadron of banshees and reinforcements to wipe out the humans. Yeah, so that kind of happens at the start, so we don't really know yet because you see Linda's mission change. She's keeping the AI very secret to herself that she has one. So herself and Dr. Shen then said, right, we're going to go back to the ship and get this AI. Does he say that? Or I thought, does he not bullshit Linda that we're going to go and get the nav unit because it's crushed under the ship? Is that what it is? He never tells her about the yeah. AI. He's like, oh, we'll never be able to climb up there in time, but the nav unit's buried. And Linda's like, oh, ho, I've got skills. I'm a Spartan. They pretty Yeah, so it's pretty much uh, him and her traipsing their way back to the ship. Um, he kind of saves, a, or she saves his life once or twice pulling him back from a mine that was placed there and like falling off the cliff edge and stuff like that. I like that she attaches him to a rope and climbs the cliff basically. With him <laughs> hanging off. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Just with two knives climbing up an ice wall. That was pretty cool. They pretty much, they eventually get to the ship. He's pretty much quizzing her and you can get the sense that like hasn't met a Spartan, but he's really appraising her of her abilities and stuff that she can do. Essentially then he points out the ship and says, there's a ship you can get to the nav unit right underneath this panel. And when she tries to access it, he locks it down and crushes her arm, uh, essentially pinning her down. And then it, there is the reveal that he is he knows what's here. He's here to get the AI and he's just using her. He kind of activates like the ship's defenses, I think. Like he, mu- he must have access. It looks like he has hidden turrets like the ones in the ones outside halls. In reach. Lab. Yeah, it looks like they pop out of cylinders in the ground. So somehow he had time to install turrets outside this ship. He, well, they've been there for like a year, right? Yeah, yeah. So he obviously has some defenses around the ship to stop the Covenant getting into it or around it, I suppose. There's a weird fight sequence here where he's accessing the ship, but secretly Linda has put Athos into it to kind of uh, retrieve the AI. So that's what kind of blocks him out. So Shen is accessing the ship while Linda is running around dancing between the turrets. Essentially, he does a, some dialogue here about what he's saying, what he's trying to do, and then he figures out there's another AI, and he says, if you keep doing what you're doing, you're going to destroy the AI plus the one you brought with you. I don't really know what spo- that's supposed to like achieve. Um, Linda doesn't stop, essentially. Eventually, this story kind of jokes back to so him. She kind of says, clearly, you're forgetting one thing, and he says, what, like, your people? And it cuts back to the camp being wiped out by the Banshees. So, like, Dr. Shin doesn't care about these people at all. No surprise there. There's some dialogue and some kind of like drama between the people here, between Hala and Luciana kind of fighting each other or calling each other traitors. I don't really care about it, to be honest. I don't think any of us do. There, there's nothing really here. It's just the Covenant attacking the camp. And again, it goes back to Linda then. Saying things like, I, I give your people a choice, unless that's all a lie. Maybe I can help them, but I can't leave here without the AI. And he says, just following orders. You're not even human. There's a lot of that thrown back and forth. Yeah, it's like, it's so, uh, such a, it's such a trope when, you know, people are talking to Spartans, yes. We've seen it numerous times before. You get the sense he's crying, he's cutting away from the UNSC anyway, that's kind of what he says, no more UNSC, no more codes, that's what he kind of says to Athos as he's accessing the ship. I get this, I don't know how he does it, but it seems, you get the sense that he does retrieve the AI from the ship, and Linda, as I said, is still... It's doing cool back flippy things and dancing around. Essentially blows almost everything up. Essentially says, how can you share the AI secrets with humanity if you let them die? It says, I don't have the power to help them now. You do. But only if you choose to leave. Prove you're more, more than metal. So essentially it's a choice between going after him or going back to the camp to save the humans. And then he kind of threatens to destroy it if she keeps coming. I don't know. He kind of has a way. He pulls a, a weapon essentially and tries to shoot. And the, I don't know, there's weird back and forth between what do you care about, do you even care if they know the truth, and he doesn't really. She pretty much very quickly disarms him, but it, which is as, as you'd expect. She like she gets him and stops him, and then she takes the stuff off him, and then he's like, oh, well, like if you're going to save them, only you can go. And then she's okay, and he says, well, I'll detonate the ship, and the avalanche will bury the attackers. And she turns around and goes, well, I don't trust you not to run away. So she shoots him in the leg. I thought he knew that was funny. And like, there's, there's a big explosion, obviously, where the camp is. So she says, we're too late. He says, no, the real nav unit is hidden in the new build. That's where they'll make their last stand. 
And he says, die and die waiting for you. And he says, I know we won't get there in time. Well, that's what it is. He admits that he's been blocking the communications the whole time because this is the thing. They send the ship and Linda can't call for reinforcements because he's blocking the signal because the elite at one point says something's blocking their transmissions, but it's not them. Which is a big reveal because this guy's a total dick. He has a device and he's been doing it the whole time, so he disables it and he radios the the people on the ground and like you can find the nav unit here in the ship which by the way they don't name this ship they just call it the new build all the time i'm looking at it now and it kind of looks like an uber condor so like a large (laughs) pelican with huge engines on the back of it essentially it's very um expanse big chunky actually do you know what it looks like a weird sort of battlestar galactica kind of thing yeah it's cool looking it does look like a condor. I don't know how it takes everybody, but it just looks huge. There's a lot more human silhouettes there than you'd think because it definitely looks like just a pelican door on the back of it and there's a lot of bodies to go in. And then you have Holla and Luciana pretty much in this ship and there's another male character as well. I can't really remember his name. He's not important. There is a Dr. Shen kind of redemption moment a little bit where um, he's talking to them in the new build. He says, I'm not going to make it. I'm sorry for what I did. For the choices I forced you to, uh, for the choices I forced you to make, and he pulls a little button and presses it, and there's a massive explosion. So he just blows himself up, and that the purpose of that is because him and Linda talked about if we set a detonation here, we could wipe out the Covenant with an avalanche, but that would kill too many of the humans. So he's pretty much just done that, and obviously, well, there was a hesitation obviously to give them humans time to get to the ship and get out. So pretty much uh, Halliburton really shouts out pretty much there is a avalanche. Come on, everybody get in. It's a mass panic to get into the ship. And then Linda comes to the rescue flying on jet boosters and sniping. Fl- she flies over the Covenant. And it's kind of some cool panels of just kind of her shooting and sniping as the snow crashes down around them, which is, which is pretty cool. Her jetpack is amazing because she's just yes. flying all around here. So like she has this Uber jetpack and... With full flight ability, grabs Luciana and Hala in the middle of the fight and just kind of flies her way back up to the the new build. Uh, And then that's more or less the end. It's just kind of like, hey, the day has been saved. You kind of get the whole sense of the humans don't matter, but it's the growth of not even the growth because Linda doesn't change in this story. It's just really showing you who Linda is. But you get the sense that Atho has changed because one of the last things he says is, um, I thought Spartan's cold, completely mission focused. It's true. But Linda is more than that independent, nuanced. So obviously he's given a report. So Linda completed the entire mission, including saving everyone and retrieving the asset we only suspected was still intact. In short, no complaints, which is kind of interesting because he obviously had a lot of complaints throughout the mission. But through the mission and his like, obviously what he thought a Spartan was and what a Spartan could be was very different. So I thought that was cool. It more or less ends there with a little reveal of Outpost Discovery is in this comic. Yep. So it kind of ends with um, the AI you retrieved The uh, is Gabriella, and she is the human, like the repository of human knowledge, i.e. she's what Outpost Discovery is supposed to be as a learning tool in canon of teaching humans about the Halos of Worlds, the Forerunners, the Covenant, and everything else in there. I thought that was kind of interesting, so... To kind of say, Aber, you've been deployed to Earth where you will serve as the caretaker of Outpost Discovery. Spartans own and Hazel will escort you there. Only recognizes that your knowledge is too important to keep to yourself, which I thought was an interesting little reveal. It's a nice little uh, tie-in to Outpost Discovery because this AI pretty much pops out of nowhere and she's kind of one of the focal points of the experience, the convention that you go to. She's like the first person to greet you at the door and stuff like that. She's a big part of it. Well, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the story? I've kind of already said a, a, a bit about it. I cared about Linda and not about anyone else, pretty much, the whole time. Yeah, I'm kind of with Krista. Just, I, I don't think comics are my preferred way to consume Halo stories because they're always a bit rushed and not filled out enough. But I just, no one else in this is really that interesting. Counterfeit male Halsey isn't terribly exciting. Yeah, he's not that big of a threat. He's not threatening at all, and the Covenant isn't very threatening at all. It's kind of like you're hanging out with Linda the entire time. The Covenant aren't overly interested in it, and I just don't buy the MacGuffin of the AI. Yeah. I don't think that Gabriella. It, I'm sure she can't be the only AI that knew what happened. It, yeah, it's 
it's a weird way to do it. I guess they they try and justify it with that her like her closing statement. Damn, I, I had it up there. Give me two seconds. Yeah, her last line is the. It must be her talking to people. At yeah, Outpost as Discovery. they walk into Outpost Discovery. Yeah, do you have it there? Yep, I have the last panel here. She says, um, "The fall of Reach began not with a bang, but with a whisper. When the Visegrad relay mysteriously went offline, it left the colony alone, isolated." So that's the intro to Halo Reach, but um, I guess that's trying to say that. She must have been there on Reach and, and saw recorded everything. everything that happened that obviously no one else knew for some reason. Yeah, I just don't buy that the biggest colony, the most important colony next to planet Earth, did only had one way to communicate with anyone. Yeah, just just the Visegrad relay. I can buy that in Battleborn because they're, they, t- they constantly say they're on this backwater world. Reach was the most important place around. And I don't for a second believe that once communications were cut off, no one did anything. This is, I th- yeah, I see. I'm not really sure. Maybe Elbow's Discovery has more information on Gabriella's kind of background. Not really, no. No, okay. I don't know. I like that they did it. Like, again, this is the most important thing. I think it's interesting that they did make an attempt to tie in Elbow's Discovery into lore because you have Owen, who is in the Meridian Divide books, Battleborn books. I thought, I do like that. That's a unique thing where they created this real world event that's in canon, in lore, and linked to these other pieces of lore that are written and came out around. So that's kind of cool. But um, it feels out of nowhere at the same time. Kind of feels like a fluff piece. Yeah, at the end anyway. I kind of wonder, is it just 343 trying to like fluff out the edges of the weird decisions Bungie took because they knew they were bouncing? Eh, I don't know. This is way after that, though. Do you know, or, or you mean about the Reach? Yeah, I just mean that, like, glaring. Like, Reach wasn't their thing. Having it the way it is wasn't their thing. And they're just like, we can pad this out that, like, this happened and we know about this and this. And I don't know. It feels like it's just trying to, like, tie up ends. Guys, want to say anything else about it? Uh, Art is cool. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Art, art is cool. Linda does some cool stuffs. There are some very nice pictures Mm-hmm. Personal favorites. There's one where the pelican or the pelican, the like drop ship is on fire, the stealth ship, and there's just this awesome picture of her helmet with the flames and like the glow on it. And there's a couple of nice images like that. Yeah, very much so. That's about it. The comics just they're not overly my thing. It's not terrible. I don't think it's anywhere near as bad as a uh, poker with. Oh yeah. Oh no, that wasn't the comic. That was the story. What was the comic? It was that was a comic with the poker night, or that was in Flip Tales and Flip Over that comic. Oh, that's right. That was a comic in there. What was the other one that was an escalation? That was Thorn going home to like hold his childhood violin from his grandparents' ashes. <laughs> there, there have been some real stinkers when it There's comes some to weird comics. Ones. Yeah. No, this was cool. I get. I guess all the outside of it and the links and stuff like that are are whatever they are again i just liked it seeing linda i think i saw it linda through the story she was i liked her i thought she was the best bit about it which you kind of said i guess you can you it's pretty obvious how we feel about it it's a good comic not great it has cool moments and linda is awesome but again we know linda's awesome but it's, it's nice to see i i do like getting individual characters fleshed out like this and a short four part comic is perfect for a small story like that just to give a little bit of context to it to a character new or old so i I quite enjoyed that so uh i guess we kind of leave it there guys so thank you very much for listening for this uh halo book club on halo lone wolf and there are more comics still to cover and more books coming along the way so thank you all please look out for those and if you're a supporter of us please come check out our patreon patreon.com forward slash halo podcast evolved we appreciate all of your help there so thank you very much our website designed by the lovely ian is still amazing um please go check it out you can get all our old episodes all our content all up there uh ian does put the book clubs up on youtube as well so they're 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 available all over the place but like i said go check out our website it's just for some reason we have halopodcast.com which is incredible but you can also come see it at halopodcast.com so that's everything so from that i will just say uh evolved Evolve. Evolve.